Welcome back. This is the story of Australian underbelly queens, Tilly Devine and Kate Lee. From the early 1920s, incredibly, these two women ruled the underworld of Sydney's East for decades. Stroll today through the heritage listed streets of Sydney's Inner East to a cafe, club or gallery and it's hard to imagine that in the early decades of the 20th century, anyone venturing here could have been taking their life in their hands. In the 1920s and 30s, the area was one of the most dangerous in the land. The kingdom of the razor gangs and of their notorious leaders, Tilly Devine and Kate Lee. Kings Cross, Paddington, Darlinghurst, Surrey Hills and Woolloomooloo were sprawling slums of unsanitary ramshackle Victorian terraces and makeshift shacks teeming with criminals, drunks and drug addicts. Well-intended laws enacted by the New South Wales government designed to eradicate crime had the opposite effect. The prohibition of firearms gave way to the easily hidden cutthroat razor and the early closing of hotels opened up an opportunity for sly grog shops. Once available over-the-counter drug, cocaine was made illegal and Tilly Devine and Kate Lee cashed in by ensuring the ongoing existence of the vices beloved by many Australians. Darlinghurst became known as Razorhurst, Devine and Lee, the Queens. Matilda Mary Devine, known as Tilly, was born in September 1900 in Camberwell, London. Life in lower class England was hard at the time and Tilly became a prostitute when she was in her early teens. Some reports say she was as young as 12 years old. She, like many English women trying to survive, were usually found soliciting on the wide footpaths on the Strand at night. From 1915, Tilly spent time at Bow Street Court and Lockup for prostitution, theft and assault. At 16, she married an Australian serviceman, James Edward Devine, aka Big Jim. On the 12th of April, 1917, at the Sacred Heart Church in Camberwell, in 1919, Tilly gave birth to a son, and in 1920, Jim returned to Australia and Tilly followed him on the bride ship Waimana. Her son stayed in London and was brought up by her parents. It wasn't long before both Tilly and Jim Devine became prominent illegal narcotics dealers, brothel owners and crime gang members in the Sydney criminal underworld. The New South Wales Vagrancy Act 1905 prohibited men from running brothels, but it said nothing about women, and Tilly was quick to take the opportunity of the legal loophole. Devine became an infamous brothel madam and organised crime entrepreneur. Tilly's wealth was legendary, although it was all earned from crime. She owned much real estate in Sydney, many luxury cars, looted gold and diamond jewellery, and travelled by ship in first-class staterooms. Much of her wealth was also used to pay bribes to the police sectors and fines for what would eventually amount to 204 criminal convictions. She was also known as one of the most violent criminals in the game. She'd set fire to a policeman, pulled apart a man's face with a razor, and generally slashed to ribbons any John who tried to cross her. Kathleen Mary Josephine Lee, known as Kate, was born in March 1881 in Dubbo, New South Wales. It was a neglectful and abusive household. Her childhood included time in a girl's home at the age of 12 and an out of wedlock pregnancy. Her daughter, Eileen May, was born in 1900. When Kate ran away from that, she ended up in a string of abusive alcoholic relationships. 
Lee earned income variously over the years, but when the New South Wales State Parliament legislated for six o'clock closing of drinking establishments, she found her calling, running at least 20 sly grog outlets. The passage of the Dangerous Drugs Amendments Act 1927 provided a lucrative illicit distribution network for the high demand cocaine it criminalised. Lee sourced her supplies from a corrupt network of doctors, dentists, chemists and sailors and amassed considerable wealth from the activity. From her Surrey Hills home, she became an organised crime entrepreneur, charging excessive prices for a full range of illicit goods and services, including sly grog, prostitution, illegal betting and gambling, and cocaine trafficking. Like Tilly Devine, Lee obtained loyalty and protection from a male network of gangsters. And like Tilly Devine, Lee didn't just want to be a boss, she wanted to be the boss. While it's unclear what actually sparked the violent clash between the queens of Razorhurst, it certainly wouldn't have helped that Tilly asked Kate if she could borrow her beloved Pomeranian dog to breed with one of her own. Tilly agreed and Kate returned one of her own inbred Pomeranians in its place. We leave the dead air then. Yeah. You still owe me five bob. You owe me a fucking dog. Tilly smashed Kate's doors. Kate trashed Tilly's brothels. Tilly slashed up Kate's coke dealers. Kate slashed up Tilly's sex workers. On it went, back and forth, for years. With both women now firm rivals, their gangs knew their enemy, attacking each other on sight with razors. Huge fights among gang members were a common sight on Sydney streets and became known as the Razor Gang Wars. By the early 1930s, police were hot on Tilly and Kate's heels after yet another series of armed brawls between their gangs had terrorised Sydney. As the net closed in, Tilly fled home to England for several years. Kate wasn't so lucky. After a series of raids, she was arrested, spending the next few years in lockup. Both had set up their organisations well though, and both ran fine in their absence. Then, in the 1940s, the unthinkable happened. The Queens called a truce, although they never became friends. By now, all their friends were dead or in jail. They'd survived poverty, abuse and violence. But it wasn't the gang wars or police who finally brought them down. It was the tax man. By the time the tax man caught up with Kate in 1954, she owed so much that paying it back bankrupted her. Tilly was slightly better off, losing almost all her property and only just managing to hold on to one small brothel. Just 10 years later, in 1964, Kate Lee died in a one-room bedsit, but her generosity towards the unemployed and homeless of the city saw more than 700 people attend her funeral, including Tilly Devine. Tilly followed in 1970. In stark contrast, only a handful of people attended her funeral. Gone, but certainly not forgotten. Kate Lee's old sly grog shop in Surrey Hills has been converted into a trendy cafe called Sly in a cheeky wink to the original use of the building. Tilly is remembered at the Darlinghurst wine bar known as Love Tilly Divine. And the Aussie band Ice House says its hit Miss Divine is loosely based on the enigmatic woman. I hope you enjoy this episode of the Nine Network Crime Anthology, Underbelly, Razor, Episode 1, 
the worst woman in Sydney. Please note, it contains swearing and partial nudity. I'll be uploading the full 13 episode series into a playlist soon. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful queen called Kate. Queen Kate. Eileen, water's gone cold. Eileen, move your fat rump. She was loved and admired by all her subjects. You look like you've put on a few pounds. Not at the duff, are you? Piss off, Ma. Scrub me back. Do it yourself. Oh, go on, be a sport. As far as Queen Kate was concerned, the world was very nearly perfect. There was only one small blot on the landscape, and that blot was young and blonde and pretty. She too was a queen, and her name was Tilly. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Queen Tilly. Who's the most gorgeous tartan all? Matilda Mary Divine, it's just got to be you. It was the 1920s, the district of Darlinghurst, Sydney, Australia, and the underworld was ruled by two rival crime queens, Tilly Divine, a new chum from England with a talent for acquiring brothels, and Kate Lee, who had a stranglehold on the city's bootleg grog business. Katie, it's five o'clock. 60 minutes to showtime. was the sin city of its time. Punters flocked there to indulge their vices, and they were rarely disappointed. About the only thing you couldn't get in Darlo was a drink after six o'clock. Legally, that is. Of course, Sly Grog was available on every street corner, if you knew where to look, if you knew the right door to knock on. And most of those doors were owned by Kate Lee. After hours, a respectable butcher shop was liable to turn into a bingo parlour. Bingo being a slang for booze. Me and Pat Malone, drinking on our own. Tilly Devine launched her career as a prostitute back in London at the tender age of 16. That's how she met and married the handsome Aussie soldier, Jim Devine. What a catch. By 25, Tilly controlled 18 brothels in Darlinghurst alone. All of them cheek by jowl with Kate's sly grog shops. Evening, boss. You look nice, very ooh la la. The 1920s weren't known as the Roaring Twenties for nothing. It was a party that never stopped. One for the scrapbooks. Worst one. I want to kick that report off the bum. It's a nice likeness. You look bonny. Shut 
Madge says Kate Lee must be the worst woman in Sydney. That sounds about right, bloody old cow. Where's my clean shirt? You're missing the point. They're talking about her by name. No mention of Tilly Devine. Why do you want to be the worst woman in Sydney, do you? Jim, I want to be recognised for what I am. I recognise your sweetheart. Recognise that arse of yours a hundred foot down a mine shaft. Kill me. Even 90 years ago, the cult of celebrity was irresistible. The trouble was, there could only ever be one worst woman in Sydney. Oh. Morning, Mrs. Lee. You're looking well, Mrs. Devine. Mm, mustn't grumble. <laughs> It's a very handsome dog you got there, Mrs. Lee. It's a Pomeranian, I believe. I found him wandering willy-nilly around Woolloomooloo. Do you nice boy? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You know the royal family have Pomeranians. Oh, for afternoon tea, you mean? On toast. Imagine the pups this little fella would give you. I'd be pretty dandy, eh? Mrs. Lee, I don't suppose you'd mind terribly yeah, I don't if I... mind giving you a loan of him, I suppose. Can't stand the thought of giving him back to that old battle axe. I bet you she don't even stand up when they sing the national anthem. Hey. You're plotting something. Oh. Tilly had no intention of returning Kate's prized Pomeranian stud dog. She'd keep him for herself, and with the help of chemicals, disguise one of her own infertile inbred pooches and give that one back instead. Simple. Excuse me, Mrs. Lee. Uh, Tilly says thanks very much for the loan of the Bonza dog. And here's a box of chocolates with her compliments. Hey, you, my little bit. You? Hey, you. Hey, you. Stop it. Walkie. Not the fucking door down. You know Big Jim keeps a 303 under his bed. Yeah? I'll do it myself, cowards. You both sack. Piss off. I'm trying to have a fucking snooze. Oi! Knock it off or I'll call you the cops. Pinch me, dog. I never did no I'm sack thing. Back. You've got bats in the belfry. Nothing but a common thief. Hang on a tick. Just to kiss the mate up. Now you got yourself an enemy for life. Big Jim Devine was right. Kate was way too proud to ever forgive Tilly for trying to pull the wool over her eyes. And that's how Kate and Tilly's decade long feud started over nothing, over a borrowed dog. This is the story of that feud. Hang on to your hats, it's not going to be pretty. Jam. Elsie, open up your gown. I want to open another house. A big joint. Make a splash. You can't handle what we got now. Oh, bloody old pig. Don't tell me. You're not in a family way again, are you? Sorry, Till. Why do you think they invented Frangus? Backyard now. Everybody else, tummies in, tits out. I found us a place in Crown Street. You find a muscle, I'll find a girl. I don't know, it sounds like hard bloody yakka. Oh, thinking of money, though. Are we good enough coming in? What kind of talk's that? You know, I would love to buy you a big, shiny new car. All right. You ready, Peg? Okay, come here. Just relax, girl. It's all right. It's really just you shoving it up, Kate Lee, yeah? Yeah, so what? I'm gonna rub that airy clam's ugly face in the dough. Show you what fucking deal you with. Go on, one more. For luck. So I could see myself in a roadster. Yeah. 
Nice little Pontiac, maybe. All right, boys. Let's get cracking. And stay out! Get out of here, you bastard. Frack Ray. Who the bloody hell are you? They call me Big Jim. I'd like to offer you a job, son. Yeah, we're doing it. Take a wild guess. Hello, dear. My name's Tilly. And I was wondering, how are you going to support yourself and the bubba when they kick you out of here? What about it, mister? Hello, Nucky. How's it going? Tilly Devine, wherever did you get that delicious hat? <laughs> i got a business proposition for you. You and your moles. What you talking about, Nugget? Don't you take my name in vain. Simmer down, Aggie. Don't I always look after you ladies. <laughs> Any of you bitches steal my clients, I'll bite your nipples off. Settle down, Aggie. We're all friends here. Go and have some snow on the house. Celebrate opening night. Anyone else want a little bit of magic dust? Make the night go better. Enjoy yourselves, girls. And let's all make a big pile of money. President Correct, boys. You're veteran, Jim. Fourth tunneling company, yeah? You're checking up on me. Told you, mate. Crikey. You must have seen some action. Oh, he did inside of a cat house between here and Gate Peru. Some things a man shouldn't have to see, Frank, goes against God. Wish I'd served us too young. Sniper. That'd be me. Oh, you're good with the gun, are you? I would be if I had one. Landfield 303, that's what I want. It's the first choice of soldiers the world over. Hard to fit in your pocket, bud. Here we go. Gentlemen, welcome to Tilly Devine's Palace of Pleasure for a taste of heaven. Why do call Big Jim's Palace of Pleasure? He's wearing the trousers. Uh, the law won't allow. Why not? See, men folk is not permitted to live off their moral earnings of whim. Well, Sheila can. No, that ain't fair. Hello. Who's this little muck? Ain't no schoolhouse around here, love. Um, is this a boardy house? There ain't nothing for you here, dear. Best run long home. I should say it is a boardy house. Thank you. Well. <laughs> what kind of job as a prostitute? How old are you, my darling? 19. And still at school? Have a woman's body. Shall I show you? You ain't done this before, have you, darling? All right, give the butchers at your frappy bits. Show us your tits. Oi, shoo! And close the door. Oi, get the snow off the girls, flush it down the grease trap, you go out the back way. Oi, what's the big idea? We're reading you, step aside. What for? Running at a solidly host. Now, out the way, tell you, I'll flatten you too. God, You child by the time to go home, little girl. Stop right there, police. Special Constable Armfield. Bloody hell. If you're flushing down the drain, cease and desist. Is this some sort of costume? What were you doing in a brothel? Did 
know what a brothel is. I can see you're a good girl from a good home. Would you like me to telephone your parents to tell them you're all right? Won't they be worried about you? It's none of your business. My name's Lillian. Nellie. Nellie. Nellie, it worries me when a girl like you finds herself consorting with ne'er-do-wells in a place like that. I've seen many a young girl stray, and I hope you're not one of them. It's all too easy to lose your reputation, and once it's gone, it is gone forever. Promise me you'll go home and forget about tonight's escapade. If I stay there, I'll suffocate. I just want to live a little bit. As a prostitute? I just want to have some fun. Can I go now? Lillian Armfield was the first female police officer in Australia, possibly the world. Her job was looking after fallen women. Nellie Cameron, the middle-class schoolgirl with the perfect vowels, would be her greatest challenge. Why tonight, eh? Opening night. How bloody mean can you be? We had reliable information. Had to act on it. Yeah, pull the other one. Yeah, and I bet I know a shelf me and that airy fucking clam's gonna pay for it. You mark my words. Wally, get Bill has gone. Mm. I'd like them myself. Uh, the tea will be fine, thanks. Wally, it's gone. Mrs. Lee, I appreciate any information you can pass my way. But I will not be used as a weapon in your war against Tilly Devine. Oh, I don't know what you're driving at, Bill. It's Inspector Mackay. Oh. Put them scones away, Wally. Now you listen to me, Inspector Mackay. I'm a good citizen. Just try and do me duty. So if I happen to come across information pertaining to the criminal activities of a certain slut in Palmer Street, I'll expect you to act on it. All right? Or I'll write a letter of complaint to the Premier. Madam, I will not be threatened by you or anybody else. Now hear this. I intend to conduct a search of these premises for illegal firearms. in the face of me enemies, would you? You can always pelt them with your scones. <laughs> no more remarkable woman ever strode upon the stage of Sydney's nightlife than Kate Lee. Yeah. What about it? Well, that's Sydney for you. Pussy town. You tried your luck up there, didn't you, Squiz? Came running home with your tail between your legs, as I recall. The Jacks had it in for me the day I got there. You know that. My point, Norman. Them crooks up there, soft as butter. That town's right for the plucking. Just as long as your name's not Squizzy Tail. A very disturbing rumour's reached my ears, Norm. A gang of scallywags are planning to knock over the bookies at Moonee Valley. You heard about it? A lot of crime around, Squiz. But a major job like that needs my blessing. Five years ago, maybe. I still run this town. Your name keeps coming up in connection, as it were. Man's got a right to make a living. Support his family. You can't deny me that. And I catch you a piece of what's mine. You're not doing the business no more, Squeeze. Not since you come out of stir. I'm as big as I ever was. You're like a brother to me, Norm. I trusted you. And now I find out you're a knocker in the woodpile. It's nothing personal, Squeeze. I taste betrayal very fucking personal. <laughs> right, you've got two choices, mate. You get out of Melbourne while the going's good. Or I'll end it right here. Because I don't want to wait around for the day you decide I'm in your way. I just want to 
have to say, Sydney. <laughs> you show them pussies who's boss, eh? And do me a favour. Yeah. Kick Kate land the balls for me. <laughs> Self-loading semi-automatic pistol, 45 caliber. Stop an elephant if you hit in the right spot. Side on a choice for the United States Army. Oh, mate, it's bloody beautiful. Well, make sure you keep it that way. It's yours. Mine. Yeah. Where go? How much? It's a present, you twerp. Why? Me and Tilly been needing a gunman. Now we've got ourselves one. Frank Green, gunman. Frank Green, gunman. What do you think? Do I pass muster? Rui up. Where'd you get the clobber? Took my savings out of the bank. You know what you're letting yourself in for? Yes, I think so. Mm? Doing it with strange men. For money. How old are you? Don't bullshit me this time. Sixteen. Mm. Same age as me when I started. Any diseases downstairs? Of course not. You're a virgin. That's good. They're in short supply. All right. It's ten bob for the hour. That's straight sex. Double it if they want to tie you up or do anything funny. The whole idea is to get the fella to do his business quick as you can. That way we shove him out the door, quick smart, ready for the next bloke. Questions? Um, how many times can I do it in a night? As many as I like. We're gonna get on fine. Turkish to light. Yeah, something like that. Go on, treat yourself. Morning. Have a good night. My first shift and I made two pounds ten. I'm a bit sore, though. Hmm. Do you know any rooming houses around here? Sure I do. I'll show you if you like. Thank you. Frank. Nelly. Frank Green. Matter of fact, they call me Frank the Gunman Green. Really? Why do they call you the Green Gunman? Yeah. <laughs> Nelly? 
I see you didn't take my advice. That's very sad. Why don't you go get yourself a bloody husband, you old bat? That's how the career of Nellie Cameron was launched. Pretty Nellie. Destined to become the most notorious prostitute of her generation. Why did a middle-class girl from a good family choose such a life? What drew her to Darlinghurst? What was she running from? This is us. Watch out, Keith. Keithy. Oh, he's getting big. He is. <laughs> With you in a tick. Come to see us off. I'm touched. Want to make sure you don't change your mind. A steak to get you started. And take this. You might need it. And do me a favour. You come across a Melbourne bloke up there by the name of Snowy Cutmore. Put a bullet in his fucking head. He's an evil fucking clam. No, don't come back. Never. Oh, excited, boys. First train ride. Who? Who? Taylor. Nothing. Tell me again why we're doing this. It's a business opportunity. I should really go and join the other girls. I'm supposed to start it too. Who's the boss here? You know, it don't matter how smart you are, how brave, how pretty. It's nothing. God made you so beautiful, Nelly girl. Enjoy it while you can. You're right, get to work. Leave the old soldier to get drunk all that. My fucking feet are about to fall off. <sighs> Where's young Nelly? Of a client. She went home sick. Got eight. Oh. Big Jim offered to drive her home. Mm. 
Mm. Get your pay, Trabbats. Rabbito. Lovely fresh rabbits, Billy. Oh. Watch you are, well, then. Bucking off, as per instructions. I was thinking blue for the Pontiac. Sky blue. Match your eyes. There's no reason we can't splash out right now. New place is looking pretty good. Turnover's healthy. You just can't keep your dick in your pants, can you? Say you love. You boys be good for your mother. I said a pot of beer. He's right, mate. There's no such thing. I'll give you a schooner. Or a midi to a woman. A woman, mate? Podcast on the bed, mate. Holy shit, generally speaking. Maybe that is what he wants. Sergeant Wickham, Darlinghurst, please. Step outside. Fuck off. What's your name? What's your bloody name? Norman Broon. You stranger in town. I only asked because I noticed you're carrying a firearm. Where you from, Melbourne? Yeah, that's right, Melbourne, where we flatten nosy coppers just for fun. Not familiar with the Pistol Amendment Act, Norman? If you're carrying an unlicensed firearm, it's automatic prison time. You hand over the gun, or I'll arrest you. Where do you want it, Flatfoot? Hmm?
Peg said you wanted to see me. I did. How are you enjoying the work? Um, I like it. Mm -hmm. Suits my nature. You look most popular, aren't you? So pretty. And we're both making money, that's good. You ever leave my husband astray again, I will rip a pretty face right off. It wasn't. Say your fucking pad! Don't you dare blacken that man's name! Remember what I said, alright? We might even be friends. Understand? Matilda Mary Devine, James Edward Devine. Your yeah, Worship, the charges are uh, riotous behaviour, consorting with women of ill repute, running a disorderly house and indecent language. Hang the buggers. Be quiet or you'll be ejected. I'll shut her up, Your Honour. Sure. They're dog thieves, Your Worship. Try the book of them. Fuck off, dog. What are you doing? Are you peeling vegetables in my courtroom? Yeah. <laughs> For me dinner. Sorry? Bailiff, remove that woman. Lock her in the brig. I'm not going anywhere. Lock no, that's where you're cell. going, Slag. Your Worship, can order. we not proceed? Silence in court. You will be charged with contempt if you don't hold your tongue. And you will speak only when I say so. Otherwise, you'll find yourself sleeping in Long Bay Jail tonight. Repeat the charges, Inspector. Riotous behaviour. Consorting with women of ill repute, running a disorderly house and indecent language in public. 250 fucking quid! Uh. Oh, because of her. Fuck it. Tilly. You know, a real gentleman would offer to carry this for me. A real lady wouldn't be shelling peas in court. Oi! <laughs> oh. Fires? Where from? Katie. Katie. Where's your smart mouth now? thought. I hurt. Go easy. Get yourself killed one day. <laughs> That's why you're here, Will. To protect me on account of the fact that I'm a poor defenceless woman. I'm serious. Forget Tilly Devine. I cannot. Who cares if she opens up a hundred brothels? You know, she wants me dead. I just wish she'd piss off back to bloody England where she belongs. And all my troubles will be over. Then just find yourself another mortal enemy.
Snow he cut more. Squizzy Taylor says a lot. Oh, oh. Not here to kill you. What do you want? I heard you're a cruel bastard. You like hurting people? You do it for money and you do it for fun. Just the kind of man I'm looking for. Who the fuck are you? I'm the man who's gonna take down Kate Lee and Tilly Devine, and you're gonna help me. So what do you say? You up for it? I say fuck off. I'm busy. might be interested. Work for you. Not a chance. I'm paying top wages. I don't trust Southerners. Bunch of gutless wonders. Changed my mind. Decided I want me a piece of Tilly and Kate. Good man. Norman Brun knew he'd found himself a powerful ally. The first step to seizing control of Sydney's vice. What he didn't know, he had only a hundred days to live. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe for more murder, mystery and mayhem. Until next time.